love like Jesus loved. We've been going through the series on, on living kingdom life, kingdom families, right? And, and how many of you have been following it during the week and the months, this whole month? We've been, we've been um, going through the scriptures on creating healthy families, not only in our homes, but also this family. And, and today was just an example, an amazing example of what family is supposed to look like. Like the Word of God says, you encourage, you come together singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. You encourage one another. You bear one another's burdens. And, and just to see that, just as, that was my message basically, but it was already, you know, um, projected here this morning. And it's just an amazing thing to live a transformed life. To live a transformed life. In, in Romans chapter 12, 2, it says here, I'll just read it to you. And do not be conformed to this word, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that, what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Do not conform to the ways of the world. This whole month, we've been learning of how not to conform to the ways of the world. The way the world projects family, the way family of loving one another should be. We had to transform our minds. We had to transform our thinking. Amen? Amen. I, I don't know whether, you know, as you went through all those points of how scripture, one after the other, was talking about how we should care for one another. It was amazing. The Bible is so full of stuff about how we should live with one another. Right? And God has transformed our mind. And it is not because it's, you know, sometimes it, it, it is a bit of a change. Because we come from different cultures. We come from different backgrounds. We come from different nationalities. And to change that culture... We are so conformed to that culture that even when we have accepted Jesus, to transform my thinking to the kingdom way is a bit hard. But the more we want that, the more we say kingdom culture comes first, more than my culture. I'm Sri Lankan. More than my culture. That is transforming. That is positioning myself to say, Lord, I am putting kingdom first. And that takes a change. And, and that is what Jesus did. He changed traditions. He changed habits. <laughs> he went, went through cultural barriers to live that transformed life and to be an example of that transformed life. We have to break thinking patterns. You know, sometimes there would have been areas for me, as I was reading the, the scriptures for the day, you know, on that, on that lift of creating healthy families, there were areas where God was talking to me in, where relationships were. Things that were broken, things that needed to be repaired, amen? I, I hope that was the same for you as well. As you read the scripture, that God would have been showing you areas that needed to be transformed. I have to live a life of difference. I am called to live a life of difference. God wants us, his people, to be different. I want you to hear that God wants us, his people, to be different. And this is the pattern in Colossians 3 verse 11. It says, Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, Christ, but Christ is all in all. Christ is all. Christ is in all of us and in all of us. We are different. Church, we are different. We are one in this room. Each one of us. We are one. Say that with me. We are one. And Christ is in all of us. Right? We are one and Christ is 
in all of us. For Jesus, it did not matter what kind of house you lived in, how many bedrooms you had in that house. It didn't matter what kind of car you, you drove, what the make of the car would be. It did not matter how much money you had in the bank. He called us his own. He called you his own. You are a family in this room. I want you to understand that some of you might be new to, to church. You are a family. You are a family member in this family that we call God's family. We have an awesome father. In our family, we have an awesome father. A father who loves us, a father who cares for us, and a father who says, you're my kid, and I'm going to take care of you. And that came so strongly, even through the prophetic words, where Papa God said to you, just leave all your stuff aside. I care for you. I love you. And you know, sometimes it's so hard for us to understand this, right? The word says it, the, it comes through the message, it comes through the worship, it comes through all kinds of things that we go through. But here we are, we go into our homes, we go into our caves and we are sulking because we think, oh, even God doesn't care for me. What kind of a father who doesn't care for his child? Just think about it. This is family. Colossians 3.12 says, Sorry. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. I want you to think of those words and let those words go deep into your soul today. Therefore, as God's chosen people, you are chosen. Understand that right now. Holy. Wow, that's a strong word. Holy. No, I'm not holy. God says you are. Dearly loved. Wow. Whoa. Get bum with bumps on. Just think about it, church. God is saying that to you right now, individually. You are my people. I love you. You are holy and dearly. When things come our way, just look around. We are wanting to look around the room right now. Just look around you. You are dearly loved. You might be here for the first time. You might have been coming here forever. You are a holy people. The word of God says you are a holy people, a royal priesthood. As much as it's for me individually, it's this group. This is what it's talking about. This, it's about this group, this family we call church. This thing we come to every Sunday. This thing we come and be really crazy. This is what he loves. This is what he's talking about here. The goal of Christianity is not for me to live by myself. He never created me to live by myself. He didn't want me to have a relationship all by myself. That is my responsibility to have a personal relationship. But he also meant this. That relationship 
relationship. That is why the word of God says, do not neglect the gathering of coming together. Do not neglect it. You know, sometimes we think, oh, I don't need to go to church today. I can follow God at home. Or I can watch something on live stream and everything will be fine. But you would miss what we had just a few minutes ago. Encouraging one another, praying for one another. Do you agree with me? Yes. We can't do that at home. You can, you're supposed to do that every day with yourself and with your spouse and with your children. You do that in your home. But what the word is talking about here is completely different. This is church. His royal priesthood. We are a body that is supposed to light the world. This body is called to light up Kenton. This body is called from wherever you come from that together we begin to pray and intercede and corporately begin to lift up prayer unto the Lord and to go out into the world as a family and as a body. That is what he's called us to do. God wants his church to live differently. Verse 13 of Colossians say, Bearing with one another, forgiving one another, if anyone has a complaint against one another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Bear with. We are called to bear with. The meaning of bear with is put up with. It's so hard. 20 years I have put up people. <laughs> but it's been good. I think all of you have a story. Yeah? You all have a story. But the word, <laughs> it's a book. <laughs> Put up with each other. God has called us to live in this manner, in this room. And that, my friends, is the hardest. To live in that manner, to put up with each other in this room, is the hardest because we've got, someone said, church is like Noah's ark. Because there are different animals and different behaviors, different personalities. Bear with one another. You don't ditch one another. Just because someone's coming through the door, oh, I better not look at her, I'm going to go this way so that I don't see that. You don't ditch one another. The world does that. The world ditches you. The world would say, okay, I've had enough with my spouse, that's it. End of my vows, end of marriage, bye-bye. I go my way, you go your way. Parents ditch children. Children ditch parents. Brothers and sisters ditch each other because of squabbles or the will was not written to him or her. But in this room, we stay united. We stay together. We don't ditch. We don't go to another church just because I don't like the way things are done by you. I don't ditch because this is God's family. This is not living waters belonging to Surik and Krishani. This is God's family and he is our father. He is our father. We have to clothe ourselves with kindness and goodness. The Bible is full of examples in this aspect of bearing with one another. The word of God says, love one another. Bear 
care of one another. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another. Live in harmony with one another. Don't give false judgment about one another. Forgive one another. Accept one another. Greet one another in love. Serve one another. Speak kindly. Submit to one another. Encourage one another. Don't slander one another behind the other's back. Offer hospitality. Be generous. Look after one another's needs. And I want to personally say, you have been amazing in this. Because as you know, we did a challenge of trying to collect an amount that we can bless some families in the church who need it. And you have outdone yourself. We've collected almost 450 pounds. And that blesses the heart, don't you? Don't you feel amazed? that this little church can do that, and it was not that the tithes and the offerings went down. No, this was going hand in hand. And that is because you have a heart for people. And, and when we talk about serving, when we talk about, I know everyone doesn't, everyone has opinions about people. But right now I would like to say, no matter what you would think about the person sitting next to you or who's sitting on the other side of the room, just bring that to God. Bring that to God and say, Lord, would you deal with that in my heart? Because I don't want to come to church every day thinking like this. You just begin to ask God to deal with it so that he can help you to have some of these areas in your life that can enhance your relationship with one another. God wants to see how we live as bearing one another, that we may bring light to the world. That we may bring light right outside these doors. When we do the coffee, people are seeing that we are different. They are seeing that there is something here that is, that is different. John 17, 23, these were the words, beautiful words that Jesus was praying. He said, therefore, sorry. Can someone read John 23 and can't simply find it? Oh yes, yes. John 17 verse 23. That I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. This them that God's talking about is us. I in them and you in me. He's having a conversation. Jesus is having this conversation with, with the Father. May they be complete in unity. Unity among each other. Unity with, with the triune God. So that the world will know. That when we go into our different places of, 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 of living and working, the world knows that you are different. That completes unity. That completes the mandate that Jesus said, go and be the salt of this world. Go and be the light of this world. When we live in unity together, and believe me, this needs to happen. This needs to first happen within your heart and within your family, and then it extends to the church. One thing that I have learned through the years is that if the home is not in order, I can't bring order in the church. My home has to be in order. My relationship with God has to be in order. The way I care for my spouse and my children has to align with what the word is saying so that I bring that. That's an overflow of what happens here. And then God says, bear with one another. When I have learned to do it with my husband and with my children and with my brothers and my sisters and whoever in my family, I begin to bring it as a demonstration into the church. 
Do you understand? Be the light of this world. Bearing one another. Bearing one another's burdens. Church is something that, that is so important in this time and in this in this in this kind of season we're in. Because this is where God is beginning to do stuff as we come together in prayer, as we hear what people are saying through the prophetic. We're beginning our hearts are being stirred. And sometimes the enemy can come and, and deceive you and say, you know what, you don't need to go to church. You just can sit and just enjoy. Oh, you have the TV in your room and you can just watch it. And who needs to come and just waste time here? Well, I, I pray that the word has spoken to you today. Because church is important. We need each other so much. You know, sometimes if I don't see some of you for a period of time, maybe one week or two weeks, wrong with them and, and oh my gosh are they okay and I'm, you won't believe even before I could leave this driveway my text will go out my text will be going out where what happened to I missed you today because it, it's family it's family you are a part of my family and that's the way we need to be with one another look around you if you see people who are not coming you know, just if you don't have the number you need to have a number. <laughs> you need to find out where, what happened to you. Why were you not here today? I was concerned. Let's begin to bear one another. Encourage one another. It's not only here that we need to be church and encourage one another. But also when you go back home, say, okay, the Lord, I need to send a text to somebody. Whom can I send, Lord? Be available for the Lord to move through you. Don't think up. Only your Monday to Saturday job, and I need the job, I do the job, I come home, I prepare food, I give food, and go back to sleep. That's, that's boring. Make yourself available. Even half an hour, or maybe 10 minutes of your time, when you say, okay, God, whom can I encourage right now? Whom can I send a text? Whom can I give a call to? And there's something I want to do where the Lord has been really um, pressing this in my heart even before I close this morning. I would like to bow, just bow our heads in prayer right now. Thank you, Jesus. As we've been talking about relationships and bearing one another's burdens and caring for one another, honoring one another, forgiving one another, I've been sensing that there have been estranged relationships amongst you. Some of you have parents that that you're not in a good relationship with. Some of you have siblings, aunts, uncles, and I don't know what your relationships look like right now. But I want to release a prophetic word over you right now. And if there's anyone in this room that is, there's absolutely no, no shame in this, but if you are saying, yes, I have a relationship in my life that I want God to move. I want God to to bring back to where it was. I want you to raise your hand. I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There are some of you who are hurting because of those relationships. And I was like the pastor routine. You can see those hands raised. Just go behind them right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just sense that in this season, 
Even those of you watching even over the live feed right now, God's releasing this word that in this season, there is going to be reconciliation. Those of you who are praying, just prophesy over them. If it's forgiveness you need, begin to ask God for that right now. If you're hurt, if you're being hurt, just ask the Lord to come in there. We are to be the light. So Father, release your light into these relationships now. Into these relationships now, Father. But we say, give them up in Jesus' name. Bring, bring back the estranged relationships. Bring them back, Father. That in this season there will be a, such a transformation, Father, of relationships. Lord, we take back what the enemy has stolen from us. We take back, Lord. And we speak restoration right now. Over any relationship that is broken in the house. Whew. Jesus. I pray for divine appointments. I pray God that you would cause supernatural divine appointments. Phone calls. Visits. Unexpected visits to come up. Whoa. Ah. Oh, Lord, that kingdom relationship relationships will be restored right in this house right in this house Lord where forgiveness needs to be released forgiveness will be released where honor needs to be released honor will be released in Jesus name receive your word we thank you for church we thank you that you are transforming our minds to love one another to care for one another to bear with one another and we clothe ourselves this morning with your loving kindness with goodness Oh, Jesus, that you would help us to be sensitive even as we leave this room this day, Father, that we will be sensitive to your heart as being the light bearers, as being presence carriers. God, that we will take your word out there that people will be drawn to us, God, because we take Jesus with us. Use us, we pray, God. In Jesus' name.